did I suspect cheating while sharing a motel room. I've been dating my boyfriend for six months now, and before that, we were best friends for over a year. He has this sister, who is actually not his biological sister, she's the mother of his late brother's kids. They formed this tight family bond because he's their uncle, which technically makes her his sister-in-law. Now before we started dating, I'd heard about this sister quite a bit. But some of the things he said raised a few red flags for me. For instance, when he moved into her parents' basement a couple of years ago, he mentioned that her mom and grandma asked if they were seeing each other. To me that felt odd, why would they ask if they were just friends? Also, this sister has had issues with some of my boyfriend's past girlfriends. She once even told him, get that small tutty bit out of my house, you can imagine how that made me feel. Some of his exes even thought he might have been having an emotional affair with her. Recently I found out that he and this sister have been best friends for years, long before I came into the picture. She was his first friend, and that's how she ended up meeting his brother, eventually dating him and having kids. After his brother passed away, they stayed close, almost like siblings. Despite my past relationship traumas and trust issues, I've tried really hard to be understanding and to trust him and her. But there's one night that keeps replaying in my mind, and it just doesn't sit right with me. We went to a concert out of town with her, and it turned into a nightmare. We ended up having to stay at a motel because there was no way to get home that night. Honestly, I couldn't sleep at all, it was one of those restless nights. Eventually I finally dozed off around 3. A.M. In the motel room, my boyfriend and I shared the bed, while she took a pull-out couch in a separate part of the room. I was convinced they had both been asleep since around midnight, which made sense because I hadn't heard a peep from them. It's worth mentioning that I was the most fully clothed person in the room. I slept in my skinny jeans and a t-shirt while my boyfriend was in just his boxers, lying on top of the covers. I tried not to dwell on it. I thought, it's warm in here, and he's a guy, this is probably normal. But then I couldn't shake the worry that she might see something she shouldn't if she got up for water in the middle of the night. But, hey, she's just his sister, right? I pushed those thoughts aside. When I woke up the next morning around 7 a.m., I noticed he was now under the covers and fast asleep. That felt strange to me, I thought. He was definitely awake at some point. As I got up, I accidentally woke him, and he went to use the bathroom. She was already awake and looked like she had been up for quite a while. In that moment, everything felt off. The way he was sleeping under the covers, the fact that she seemed so alert, it's all left me feeling unsettled. I can't help but wonder, did anything happen while I was sleeping? Am I just overthinking it? I need to hear your thoughts. Am I crazy for questioning their relationship, or should my instincts be taken seriously? And this is where things really started to feel suspicious. When my boyfriend walked around in just his boxers in front of his sister, I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was off. As he headed to the bathroom, I caught a glimpse of something dark on his neck. But before I could even process it, he was back in bed, insisting that he wanted to sleep more because he hadn't gotten enough rest. Then, his sister came into our section of the room wearing just a shirt and underwear. She made a comment about me supposedly looking at her butt, which I definitely wasn't. It felt like a weird distraction. I had a hunch that her shorts were gone, but I couldn't be sure. Fast forward to around 8.30. A.M. When he got up to go outside for a smoke. While we were sitting at the bench, he casually mentioned that he had gone to the bathroom five times. Confused, I asked him when the first time was, and he claimed it was when he got up with me. But that didn't add up, I'd only seen him go once since I woke up, and I hadn't dozed off to miss any other trips to the bathroom. That was odd to say the least. By 11. A.M. We were back at the car, ready to leave. That's when she dropped a comment about how big and soft my boyfriend's shoulders were. It struck me as strange but not surprising considering their close relationship. Then she said he was her soulmate, and that they had this instant connection, calling him the dude version of her. I couldn't help but reply, that's crazy because I used to say the same things about him, I'd never met anybody like him. It felt like a weird moment of bonding, but there was an underlying tension. As we were about to head out she mentioned only getting three hours of sleep, and my boyfriend smirked in agreement, claiming he didn't sleep much either. I couldn't help but think that it just didn't add up. I had been asleep from 3. A.M. 7. A.M. And they both claimed they had gone to bed around midnight. 
If he was up with me, that would mean he had a solid seven hours of sleep, and that raised more questions. Did she wake up the moment I fell asleep? With all these oddities swirling in my mind, I found myself spiraling when we got home. I turned to alcohol for two days, desperately trying to numb the confusion and anxiety. When I finally sobered up, I took a closer look at that dark spot on his neck, the hickey I noticed that morning. It looked like it was a few days old. And then, I spotted four scratches on his shoulder that he hadn't even noticed until I pointed them out later when he took off his shirt. When I asked him about them, he claimed they were from me. But I knew I hadn't done anything like that. Our intimate moments never got that rough. At first he said the scratches were from sleeping in his car, but now he insisted they were from me if I ever brought it up. Everything felt like a web of lies, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that something happened that night, something I wasn't a part of. I have so many questions racing through my mind. Did I miss signs? Should I confront him about everything I've noticed? It's all been weighing heavily on my heart, and I just don't know how to proceed. Story 2. How I Caught My Mom Cheating When I was 18, I went through a really tough time, and I just need to share it to feel a bit better. It's a long story, so bear with me. Two years ago I caught my mom cheating on my dad in our own house. At that time, he was away for about two to three months. At night, I was so overwhelmed that I said a lot of things to her because I didn't know how to handle the news. I went to my brother and begged him to come with me to see what was going on, but he refused. Then I asked to use his phone to call dad because I didn't have my own. My mom told my brother not to give me his phone. She started cursing at me and said, I will see you tomorrow, just wait. Eventually my dad came back home and I told him everything. Seeing him cry broke my heart. He confronted her that same evening. She started lying and manipulating him, saying all kinds of things. My dad came to me and I told him she was lying. I mean, why would a daughter make up such things about her own mother? He knew I wasn't lying, but he felt powerless. My dad can't stand up to my mom. He's uneducated and doesn't have the backbone. After that, my mom started misreading me and leaving me to starve. I wasn't allowed to eat anything because she bought it, but my dad would sneak me fruits and snacks without her knowing. It got so bad that I started harming myself. I didn't want to live this horrible life, especially during COVID when I couldn't go out and had nowhere to go. I was stuck at home enduring that torture. I wished I was in school just to get away for a few hours. During those years, I started hating my mom. We weren't close at all. Things eventually got better once I got my license at 17. My mom started treating me better, but there were still things she did that hurt. I've been doing housework since I was 11, which made me hate it because I was always forced to do it and got yelled at all the time. I was supposed to clean the whole house cook, take care of my younger brother, and study all at once. If I didn't do some work or said something to my brother, she would come at me. My brother was allowed to hit me, call me names and make me do his things, but I wasn't allowed to say a word to him. He took advantage of that a lot, and I started hating him too. My dad wouldn't do anything because my mom would always shut him up. Yesterday, she woke me up at 10. I got up and made food for myself because she didn't cook for me. She only made food for herself, my brother, and my dad, then went to sleep. After eating I washed the dishes and cleaned the place. The only thing left was to mop and sweep the floors. My brother told me he'd handle it, so I said okay and went to my room. A few hours later, my mom woke up and started yelling at me for not doing anything. I told her I did my part and then my brother said he'd do the rest. For some reason, she got so mad that she wanted to kick me out. And she did. I told her I'd do it now and help with the work, but she wouldn't listen. She demanded my phone and told me to leave. I tried to convince her, but it was no use. So, I packed my bags and left. I went to my friend's place and her mom took me back home just to let my parents know I was safe because they were about to call the cops. But when we got there my mom started yelling at my friend's mom and said things no mother should ever say to their child. My dad was out looking for me, and when he found out I was home he came back. I told him I didn't want to stay, but he wouldn't let me leave. A lot happened and I'm really losing my mind. Today, my dad managed to get my phone back from her. I just got it an hour ago. You might be wondering why I'm not working and moving out. That's my plan, but I can't get a job. I've tried everywhere in my city, but I keep getting rejected. It's really demotivating. I had $1,400 in saved from family visits, but my mom took that a few months ago. I asked her to give it back, 
but she wouldn't. I just want a peaceful life. I'm so tired of living in this hell. Sometimes I wish I could just die, but even death doesn't seem to want me. She gave me the phone back, but I don't know if she'll take it again because she paid for it, and the SIM card. I want to get a new number and start paying for my own phone so she can't take it away, but I'm not sure if that's how it works. I want to work and save money to get out of here as soon as possible. I hope I can get a job soon. Thank you for listening. I feel a bit better after typing it all out. I know it's long, and I'm sorry for that. A user named Big Iron Bruce commented, I'm sorry your mom has treated you so terribly, it's not fair to you, she should be ashamed, and ask for your forgiveness. In high school my friends told me they saw my dad with different women around town. That they were sorry to tell me this, but didn't want to keep it a secret from me. My father was a cop, who was also a huge weightlifter with a bad temper, and so I kept the secret to myself until I moved away from home. When I talked to my mom about it later, she told me she knew and it was far worse than I suspected. I haven't spoken to my dad in over a decade. Not just for that but many other reasons similar to your story. These are not secrets children should have to keep. User named Is It All From China Shares, you have options. Call Child Protective Services and let them know you are being abused. Show them your post and have them go after both your mom and your dad. You should not have to live like this, but sometimes adults are real assholes and you need to have the law step in to help. Call them yes, they may take you to a temporary foster home, but you will at least have an opportunity to get out and try and find a job. I'm usually the one saying stick with family, but there is no love from your mom, and for whatever reason she seems to hate you. I dare put it that way, but I'm constantly reminded of a stepmother who would be this cruel, not the mother that birthed you. So sad I pray for you and hope it all works out. Story 3. My wife of four years had an affair with my stepfather. My wife and I, both 26, have been together since seventh grade. We went through high school and college together without any breaks or time offs. We always had a strong connection and loved each other throughout those nine school years. Everyone in our classes knew we would get married. We even got voted, most likely to get married at prom. I proposed our junior year of college and we got married after graduating at 22. My parents divorced when I was six and my mom remarried when I was 15. My stepdad, who was 52 then, had been a basketball player. He played four years at a D1 college and spent over five years playing overseas. He never made it to the G League or NBA, but he married my mom after all that and has been a roofer ever since. He's 63 now. As for me, I'm 5'6 and never played sports in school. I always stayed in shape and went to the gym regularly, but I never got into competitive sports, mainly because of my height. So, my wife has known my stepdad for as long as I have. Anytime he saw me, she was with me. Fast forward to now, we've been married for four years and have a two year old child. My mom lives less than five minutes away, so we see them often. My wife is an engineer, and I work in pharmaceutical sales. My schedule varies, but I usually work from 8 to 4, frequently coming home after 4. One day, I closed nearly half my sales early, and was headed home around 1. When I pulled in, I saw my stepdad's car parked down the street. At first I thought he knew someone in the neighborhood. I got home and as usual, walked in through the side door instead of the garage, it's quicker, and coincidentally, there's no ring camera there. As soon as I walked in, I heard some suspicious noises. I quietly went upstairs, opened our bedroom door, and there she was, my 26-year-old wife having sex with my 63-year-old stepfather in our bed. The worst part was they didn't even notice me I stood there, jaw dropped and speechless, for about 12 to 15 seconds, just 5 to 6 feet away from them. When they finally saw me, her only repeated answer to why she did it was, I just needed something different. To this day, I don't know when it started. I assume it's been at least five years, given they've known each other for 11 years. I'll probably never know for sure. I'm going through the divorce process now, and honestly I feel 100 times worse for my mother. The pain she's in is terrible. And yes, I did get a paternity test, and the child is mine. In summary, I've never felt less of a man than I do now, but I'm working on becoming a better version of myself. A user named Aggressive Cup 8452 commented, You're not less, so stop feeling like that. Cheating is a choice, it was her choice, so don't blame yourself for the choices she made.
There are so many different options before you choose to cheat on your spouse. And even if her choice was to cheat, did it have to be your stepfather? In your bed? This shows a lack of character on her part, not yours. I'm sorry this is happening to you and your mother. A user named g 4 exe also commented, Such a shitty situation, I'm really sorry for you. I know you are feeling like you weren't enough and such but remember it's all bullshit, just your mind playing tricks on you. You did nothing wrong, they are pathetic and wasted a decent part of their lives, nothing more than that. Your ex wasted almost half of her life so far, lost a family and probably respect from others. The guy is too old to get into a relationship, so he will have to stay alone until he meets his end. You on the other hand, still have your mother and friends to support you, there is nothing bad you can say about yourself. Take your time, focus on your kid and yourself, don't bother even talking with those two unless it's about your kid. You are still young and can start fresh, they can't. Old man is too old and even if your ex finds someone else, I bet she won't tell them about what she did so, the whole thing will be built on a lie. Make sure your mom and kid are okay, and soon it will all be just a part of the past. I wish you luck with whatever you decide to do in the near future. Take care man. Story 4. Discovering early on that many girls are potential cheaters. At 19 I worked part-time as a teller in a posh area. It was a big bank with lots of tellers. I was involved with several of them, a 27-year-old loan officer, and even some customers. Here are a few stories involving married women or those in relationships. Among the tellers, there were two particularly attractive ones I avoided because they had boyfriends. One had been in a relationship for two years and the other for six months. These two were friends and didn't join us when we went out, which was often since we were mostly college kids working part-time. The one in the two-year relationship was sexy and very tempting, while the one with the six-month boyfriend was pretty, sweet, and someone I could see myself falling for. While the other girls flirted with me, these two just gave me funny looks and didn't interact much. One day, as I was finishing up my work, I casually told the girl in the two-year relationship, Susie, why don't you break up with your boyfriend so we can go out? I expected her to laugh it off, but instead she gave me a strange look and said nothing. I didn't think about it again until a few days later when she came up to me and seriously said she had broken up with her boyfriend and we could go out now. I laughed, thinking she was joking, but she was dead serious. To cut a long story short, I ignored her, and from that day until I left the job, she gave me the evil eye every time she saw me. Being 19 high on life, and naturally a flirt, I forgot about this incident. About two weeks later, without thinking I told the girl in the six-month relationship the same thing, why don't you break up with your boyfriend so we can go out? I thought highly of her, she was very pretty sweet and seemed to have high morals. But here's where I learned a lesson about people. She looked at me seriously and said, I heard what happened with Susie, so, I'm not going to break up with my boyfriend, but I, if you want to go out we can go out. I didn't go out with her either, just like with Susie. Her willingness to cheat on her boyfriend made me realize that even those you wouldn't suspect could cheat if they saw a good opportunity. Back in those days. 1. I found myself going out with quite a few single customers. But, interestingly, some married ones would flirt with me and drop hints about going out. With the married ones, I always played dumb, pretending I didn't catch on to their flirting. There was this one customer who stood out. She came in regularly, always impeccably dressed, easily a solid nine. It was clear she had married well and was quite well off. She handled some financial matters for her husband and would wait in line just to come to my window every single day. She even brought me gifts from her shopping trips like cologne. She'd often hint at going out, but I kept up my act, pretending I had no idea what she was suggesting. This was about 30 years ago, and maybe things have changed since then, but back then, women would flirt and drop hints about going out without directly asking, especially if they were taken. There was one woman who got frustrated after hinting several times without me responding. She straight up told me, let's go out, I guarantee you'll get laid on the first date. It was harder to play dumb, but I managed by ignoring her and focusing on the transaction. Two, then there were the married women related to me through marriage who came on to me, at one family gathering, there was this man, my brother's in-law, who had married a French woman. He brought her to the gathering, and my 19-year-old self thought it was a great chance to practice my French. So I spent a lot of time talking to her in French. After an hour or two, her husband asked to speak to me privately in a corner, and she came along. 
He told me his wife was very attracted to me. I looked at her, and she had this look like if I said yes, she'd jump me right there in front of the whole family. Again, I played dumb, acting like I had no clue what he was talking about. He repeated himself, and again, I acted clueless. Eventually, I made an excuse to leave, and that was the end of my French practice. There was another time when my cousin's beautiful wife made a move on me, and yet another in law's attractive wife blatantly hit on me after asking me to dance. My go to strategy was always to play dumb, acting like I had no clue what they were insinuating. I can honestly say that I never took any of these advances from married women. You'd think that witnessing these potential cheaters would have taught me something. But instead, in early college, I fell in love with a girl. We dated for a while, and then she cheated on me.